At Brooks School, we live and learn on the land once of the Penacook people, and we acknowledge their enduring presence. Today on Indigenous Peoples Day, it is particularly important that we remember the Penacook people and acknowledge them. As you know from history class, this land and the land throughout the Americas was forcibly taken from the indigenous people by European colonists. Disease, conquest, and forced relocation devastated the indigenous community from the moment Europeans first stepped on these shores. While we appreciate Brooks and the land it sits on for its beauty and as a place where students come to experience the most meaningful educational experience of their lives, Within the indigenous community, the very term boarding school conjures up horrible memories. The United States used boarding schools to forcibly remove indigenous children from their families in an attempt to eliminate indigenous cultures and force assimilation into mainstream American culture. These students were punished for speaking their native language. Their long braids were cut off to disconnect them from their traditions. Many of these children died from the poor treatment and conditions at these schools and never returned to their families. Only recently have attempts been made to try to return the children who died at these schools to their communities. The conquest and these attempts at forced assimilation are a horrible legacy of this continent and this nation, which should be remembered on this day. However, to start this Monday morning, Mr. Sherpentier and I would also like to remember and focus on the wonderful contributions such as this land we stand upon, which indigenous cultures have had upon our lives. Good morning. Lacrosse has been a part of my life for over 40 years. I've been a player, a coach, a fan, and a lacrosse parent. I remember very clearly the windy November day in ninth grade when a new acquaintance took me out on a frozen football field to play catch. I fell in love with the sport that day for reasons I couldn't quite put my finger on. I just knew that this wonderful game had created some sort of connection to this person I had just met. I was unaware that day of any of the history of lacrosse, its reputation for being white and elite, and even after all this time, I can never be fully aware of all that has transpired around the sport. In many ways, the history of lacrosse has mirrored the history of indigenous peoples in North America, to which Ms. Musto has already alluded. The game has been appropriated from its original creators, changed and adapted. Indigenous peoples have been excluded, even banned from the game. They have been discriminated against, even when ultimately allowed to play and the true meaning of the sport has been forgotten, or worse, intentionally ignored. The Haudenosaunee people designed the sport of lacrosse as a way to honor their creator, to bring people together, connect them to nature, and as a game that might heal the ills of the world. The Iroquois national team has on its webpage a prayer that is recited before each game. The boys who've played it here at Brooks are familiar with it, as I cite it on our own team page. The prayer reads, we send a message to the creator's land that there are peoples representing the four directions of Mother Earth, having assembled here today to enjoy the game of lacrosse. And as these games are conducted, we acknowledge this healing energy and peace of mind for all humankind. We acknowledge the continuance of this ancient game as beneficial for the future generations of all peoples of the world. Today, after many long, dark years in the sport, those at the highest levels of lacrosse have taken the first small steps toward making amends. At the professional level, the college level, and even high school and youth levels, steps have been taken to acknowledge and celebrate not just the origins of the game, and the great indigenous players who have made contributions, but also to cast light on the pain and anguish many of those same players have experienced in the sport. Last year, for instance, the Irish national men's team withdrew from an international tournament so that the Iroquois national team, which had not qualified only because of a technicality, could take their place. The PLL, the Men's Professional Field Lacrosse League, has made great strides in acknowledging and promoting its current native players as well as the history of the game. Funds have been raised and support given to grow the Iroquois National Women's Program and Youth System, 
a program that still struggles mightily, however. No one exemplifies this ongoing conflict more than Lyle Thompson, the best men's lacrosse player on the planet. Thompson is a member <coughs> of the Iroquois Nation, holds the record for most points in a career in NCAA history, won the Tuaraton Award as the best men's college player in lacrosse twice, and is considered the best player in the Premier Lacrosse League. This past season, Thompson also won the league's humanitarian award for his efforts in calling attention to the atrocities committed at native boarding and residential schools in North America. Still, just two years ago, Thompson became the target of an in-arena public address announcer at a professional indoor lacrosse game who called on fans and Thompson's opponents to snip the long traditional braid he wears out of the back of his helmet during games. Thompson has not asked to be the defender of his people's right to play the game that they received from their creator, but he has taken on that responsibility with grace, sensitivity, and empathy. From this incident, he created a foundation to raise funds and awareness around the issue of discrimination and racism in the sport of lacrosse. It's tough for me to say this was a bad thing that happened because so much good came of it, he said, in the wake of the incident. It's brought together so many, it's educating so many people, he said. Everyone associated with the game, and even those who don't feel as if lacrosse impacts their lives at all, can learn from this incredible young man. I've been fortunate to share the lacrosse field with native players and coaches over the years, as teammates and opponents, colleagues and rivals, and this game has impacted me in ways that I'm sure I don't even realize. Both of my children play lacrosse, and some of our most treasured family memories revolve around the game. And that ninth grade boy who introduced me to lacrosse all those years ago, he became the best man at my wedding. Like Mr. Charpentier, the indigenous community has connected with me in many ways. As many of you know, I love running. I've run multiple marathons and coached cross country for several years. For me, running has always brought me peace. However, it can also often be focused on split times, finishing, and painful exertion. Many times I was only happy with a run when it was finished or if my pace was fast enough. A few years ago, I began teaching classes of indigenous students at Phillips Academy Summer School. I was surprised that my main connection instantly with all of my indigenous students was a love of running. Here at Brooks, I teach some runners, and many, but many students react with surprise that I love to run marathons. Why would you want to run that far, many students ask. However, a large majority of my indigenous students during the summer were on their high school cross country teams and wrote vividly about the experience of running in their essays. Well, part of this was because their home schools could easily afford cross country programs when more equipment intensive sports were outside the budget. The greater reason was how important running is to many indigenous cultures. It's important to remember that the indigenous community is made up of many different cultures and no two are exactly alike. However, within many of the larger indigenous communities in the United States, such as the Navajo or the Pueblo, running is an important tradition. For example, the coming of age ceremony for Navajo women includes running at several points in a multiple day ceremony. In this tradition, running symbolizes the woman's strength and helps to prepare her for the adversity of life. For many indigenous cultures, running is also seen as a way to connect with, appreciate, and respect the land they run on. Within some indigenous cultures, running also serves a religious purpose. Several of my students wrote of elders encouraging them to run while praying for guidance when struggling with a particular decision or problem. Prayer would be incorporated into the activity to give the run a more spiritual connection or to even bring healing. A good example of this, Runner's World magazine recently featured Rosalie Fish, a member of the Cowlitz tribe, who was recently recruited to run for the University of Washington. She runs all of her races with a red hand print across her face in memory of missing and murdered indigenous women. In her recruitment process, she made it clear that any school she attended would need to support her in this part of her running. She uses her run to remember these women and bring awareness to this issue. She is just one, one of many indigenous runners of late who have been documented in mainstream media for running to remember those within the indigenous community, whether it is missing murdered indigenous women, victims of boarding schools or other people or events important to them. While this is a larger, more publicized example, my indigenous students routinely used runs to connect spiritually with the land and with their culture. 
Through several summers, my indigenous students taught me about their culture and the many ways running is important to their communities. They taught me that running is more about the journey than the finish, that running can be spiritual, that running can connect me to the earth and the land around me. Now when I run, I use that time to look at and appreciate the land around me and think of those who have come before me. Now when I run, I dedicate races to people and causes that need to be remembered. Now when I run, thanks to indigenous runners, I use that time to pray. Uh, current, and, and current social and political conditions in this country have caused uh, long overdue self-examination for all of us on an individual, institutional, and national level. The English department is not exempt from this self-reflection. Over the last two years, we've tried to rethink not only what we do in the English classroom, but how we do it. Our commitment to the belief that literature and writing should provide a window through which students can view the world and a mirror in which each student can see themselves led us years ago to create a sophomore curriculum, for instance, that explores cultures from around the world through literature. Over the last two years, we have made a commitment to include a more diverse reading list at all levels. For instance, we've re refocused our junior American literature uh, curriculum in order to include more traditionally underrepresented populations in this country. This includes indigenous authors such as Louise Erdrich, Joy Hardrow, Tommy Orange, Rebecca Roanhorse, Elizabeth Acevedo, Karan Wood, Ekira Adler Belendez, Natalie Diaz, Sherman Alexi, and others. Including these voices is vital in understanding the role literature has played in the history and cultures of this country. Today, I'd like to read one of my favorite poems, a poem I return to quite a bit. Uh, it's a brief piece by Ekua Adler Blendez. The Coyote's Trace, for my father. The sky provides room for the moon to move, the moon for my eye to linger, and this for me to ponder on the privilege of invisible and visible sight. Yet if you wish to find out about this freedom, if you attempt to track me, do not speak to me. Speak to what makes me hungry. Follow the traces of what I love. So to conclude on this Indigenous Peoples Day, consider the ways that Indigenous people may have influenced your life. Take the time to learn more about indigenous history. You can even take a Native American studies class at Brooks or the authors that Mr. Sherpentier just mentioned. As you run around campus or participate in the Chipotle Challenge or play lacrosse, appreciate the land of the Penacook people that we live and learn upon. Your lives will be better for it. Thank you. Thank you.